Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be fact-checking Palantir's CFO, Dave Glazer. This video does take a bit of time to walk through as there's some math involved, but I think the CFO is actually being intentionally dismissive of the issue and just kind of hopes retail will listen to him and go away. Anyways, let's hop in. During the recent Q1 earnings call back on May 9th, the second question during Q&A was the following. Daniel L. asked, what is Palantir doing to reduce share dilution? Dave responded with the following. Thank you, Daniel. This is actually something that is repeatedly misunderstood. If you take a look at last year, we only added 0.004% in fully diluted shares outstanding in the entire year. If you flip to the first quarter of this year, that fully diluted number actually declined for the quarter. It's the second part here that really struck me, where he said their fully diluted shares are actually down year over year. My first thought was there can only really be two things that are causing this to happen. One, they're doing share repurchases, or two, the share price has tanked, which makes shares outstanding appear, fully diluted shares outstanding appear lower than it actually is due to treasury stock method and some accounting principles. Now, the first one I assume they were not performing share buybacks as they're barely cash flow positive and growing, so probably have better places to put capital for the business than buying shares. And you know, a quick look at their cash flow statement indicates they are not buying back shares. If they were, they should show up under the financing activities area. Here's an example of what it looks like. We can see there are two lines in the financing section related to equity. There is proceeds from exercise stock options, which is actually something we will hit on in the treasury stock method. And then shares acquired by purchase. If we quickly look at Palantir's most recent cash flow statement for Q1 2022, we'll see they have only proceeds from the exercise of common stock options and no repurchase of shares. So this leads me to believe the fully diluted shares are down year over year due to a counting and a tanking stock price. Let's see if we're right. But before we jump into the analysis, let me first explain how to calculate fully diluted shares outstanding. The most common and standard method is what is known as the treasury stock method. In essence, what this is, is it assumes that any stock options that are in the money will be exercised and any proceeds from those employees exercising these options will immediately be used by the company to repurchase shares in the open market to alleviate any dilution that may be experienced by other shareholders. So let's hop into my model and see what the heck is actually going on. This model is available to download. I highly encourage you follow along the formulas and everything just to learn. It can be a little confusing. It's linked below in the description. The first tab, we're calculating the fully diluted shares as of 5-7-2021. This would represent roughly the time they had their Q1 earnings call last year. Palantir is interesting, quick note, they have three classes of shares with two of them not being traded publicly. The class B can be converted at any time to class A and the class A is the publicly traded. So these can become liquid, but the class F are controlled by the founders and they have voting rights that are always going to represent 49.999% of the vote, regardless of future stock issues. So now that we have that covered, let's step through this calculation. You'll see at the top, we have current share price. Since only class A shares are traded, we'll record that there along with some other stats that aren't really necessary for this model, such as the high and low over 52 weeks. I've pulled the stock price as of closing on May 7th, 2021, which was 1975 at that time. The next item we need to pull is the shares outstanding of each class of stock. This is listed actually on the cover page of the 10Q. If we add these up, the three classes of shares, they have 1,876,746,000 shares outstanding at that point in time. The next thing we need to calculate is the effects of stock-based compensation on the dilution of shares. This is also reported in their 10Q. In 2021, this was actually on page 16 under note 10. We can see for stock options, they have an ending balance of 477,577,000 outstanding options with an average exercise price of 639. We will capture this in our model. This will be used to calculate the proceeds that would be recognized when these options are exercised. Because the stock price at the time was 1975, which is actually above the average stock price, these are all considered to be in the money, which means they would dilute current shareholders. However, when these are exercised, employees must pay the premium, which the company will receive, which equates to roughly $3 billion in cash, which is assumed to be used to go and purchase shares at the current market price of 1975. 
Now they also have 174,523,000 RSUs outstanding, which can be found right below the option schedule in the 10Q. RSUs are free to employees. They are granted to employees invest over a certain amount of time, and they are a pure expense to the company. Employees will not have to pay to exercise these, but they do dilute current shareholders as well. So we do need to include them when calculating fully diluted shares. We can now see in our model for class A shares, there'll be 1.8 billion outstanding shares and 652 million shares in the money options and RSUs. Upon exercising of the options, the company would receive 3 billion in cash, which could be used to actually repurchase 154 million shares of Class A stock. This would leave us a fully diluted share count of 2.3 billion shares of Class A. So the stock compensation during Q1 of 2021 represented 500 million shares of a fully diluted basis, which was just over 25% of the Class A shares outstanding. If we add the Class B and F to the fully diluted Class A, we get a fully diluted share count of 2.374 billion shares. Now, let's hop into the second tab and we're gonna do the same thing for May 9th, 2022. The, information, the same information can be found in their most recent 10Q as well. From the cover page, we can see they have 1.946 billion Class A shares outstanding, 98.8 million Class B shares, and the same 1 million Class F founder shares outstanding. The stock price on May 9th close was 746. If we look at page 14, note nine, we see they have 342 million options outstanding at an average stock price of $7.89. This means these options are out of the money and would not be exercised at current stock prices as it wouldn't be profitable. So they wouldn't dilute current shareholders. And if we go to page 15, we'll see the RSU balance, which is 141 million RSUs, which will dilute shareholders. So based off this information, using the treasury stock method, we can see only the RSUs will dilute current shareholders as options would not be exercised currently. This gives us a total class A fully diluted share count of roughly 2.1 billion shares, which to the CFO's credit is down year over year when compared to the 2.3 billion shares fully diluted of class A last year. In 2022, we add the class B and F shares as well to get a fully diluted count of 2.2 billion shares, which is actually around 200 million shares less than 2021. Now, the reason we're seeing this is the options are worthless, so they will not dilute shareholders. If we normalize either 2021 or 2022 stock prices, we can see the actual impact of stock-based compensation. If we adjust the share price in 2021 to the share price of 746, we would now see the number of shares available to buy back increase from 150 million to 400 million as the exercise price and the current share price are actually much closer. This leaves us with an adjusted fully diluted share count for 2021 of 2.119 billion shares for all classes, which is actually about 70 million shares less than our Q1 2022 numbers. So even with none of the options being in the money, this represents about a 3% increase in share count, which really isn't all that bad. We can also do the same exercise and see what the fully diluted share count would be if the stock was still at $20. I think this is a better example. In this scenario, now all of our options would be in the money and with the proceeds, Palantir would be able to buy back 136 million shares of the 484 million shares they've given out in stock-based compensation. This would result in a fully diluted share count of 2.394 billion shares, which is slightly higher than the 2021 amount of 2.374 billion, which represents a little less than 1% dilution. So not that bad at all. Now, technically the CFO is telling the truth on a fully diluted basis. Using the treasury method, the share count is down because the stock price has cratered and shares are no longer, and options are no longer in the money. Technically the truth, but let's dig in a bit deeper and look back at 2021. Are they actually using the proceeds to repurchase shares? The answer is no, they are diluting shareholders. If we look at their cash flow statement, we will see they have $300 million in proceeds from the exercise of common stock options. However, they've only repurchased $4 million worth of shares. They've pocketed the other 296 million. This is very much visible in the actual shares outstanding. They go from 1.867 billion shares outstanding in Q1 to 2.046 billion shares outstanding at the end of Q1 2022. That's almost an increase of 200 million shares or about 11% of the shares outstanding. I believe the CFO is trying to pull a fast one. He's using accounting in the fact that retail probably doesn't understand how fully diluted shares is actually calculated to say, don't worry about it. It's a non-issue. But if you aren't deploying the cash received to buy back shares, 
Your fully diluted count is the total potential shares if options are exercised in RSU's vest with nothing being bought back. In this case, we would be at roughly 2.533 billion shares outstanding in total. Compare that to the current shares outstanding of 2.188 billion, and you're gonna be diluted an additional 16% after already being diluted last year by 10%. It's not a good look, and I think the CFO is crafting a narrative in a way that doesn't sound that bad. Anyways, that's all I had to, for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe.